Hey friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. Before we get into today's tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to do a modern French twist today. It's a very popular wedding hairstyle for 2023. So I'm gonna show you one version and one way to do that today. But before we get into the tutorial, I do wanna let you know that I just created a free list of video ideas for bridal hairstyles. So if you're someone who struggles with posting on social media consistently, if you have a hard time coming up with ideas and just not knowing what to post, I came up with a list of 33 video ideas for social media, for bridal hairstylists. So if you wanna grab that, it's completely free. I'll put the link down below if you want to get that list. Um, I think it'll really help you out, get your wheels spinning and start giving you some ideas of what to post on social media to market your bridal business. All right, now let's get into today's tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be teaching you how to create a beautiful modern French twist. I just recently did one for a wedding and it's become, it's such a popular style and popular request right now. So I thought I would show you guys how to do a modern French twist on medium to finer hair texture. So this is gonna be someone who doesn't have like a crazy amount of hair. There's a better way to do it on someone with thicker hair. This is gonna be for someone with that finer to thinner hair texture. So I'm gonna show you everything that I do from start to finish, the prep work, the products, everything. So the first thing that I like to do is just quickly go through the hair, give it a nice good brush, make sure it's free of tangles and it's ready to go. And my prep work, I always want it to take as little time as possible and prep the hair as quickly as I can because that's really gonna save me the most amount of time. So I'm gonna start off with putting a little bit of oil in her hair and because this is on finer, thinner hair, I don't wanna use any super heavy oil. So I'm using a little bit of the Kenra moisture oil it's very liquidy, as you can see. I just put a couple drops on my hands and I'm just gonna run this through the ends. This is a great oil on finer and thinner hair because it's not gonna make it look super oily or greasy. It's just gonna absorb right into the hair and it literally works so good on like the finest of hair textures. Once I get that in the hair, I'm just gonna comb it through again really work that oil into the hair to create that beautiful shine. Her hair is not too bad. It's a little frizzy on the end, so I'm gonna go through and quickly curl the hair just to smooth it more, seal those ends, and get rid of frizz. This is gonna be a really quick thing. This does not need to take a while. What I like to do is just go through the hair and take really big sections and just smooth out those ends. If their hair isn't super frizzy, then you can skip this step. There's no need to work harder if, you, if they don't need it. Most of these ends are gonna be all tucked away anyways, but if their hair is prone to frizz, just taking a little bit of heat over their hair can help a lot when creating longevity in the style as far as keeping the frizz down all day. So it doesn't matter which way you curl the hair. It We're not trying to get a perfect curl or anything like that. We're just simply running the iron through the hair. This is also gonna get some of that shine worked into the hair as it's working, as that heat is working together with that oil. So we're just quickly doing this. No, there's nothing, nothing like precise about this. We're just taking big sections and quickly going through the hair. I love doing this as a quick prep method just to smooth frizz out of people's hair before starting their style. Some people's hair textures and hair types are going to take a lot longer to prep, but typically my prep work, I try to keep it between five to 10 minutes if their hair is already, if it's not super coarse or super frizzy, I can usually prep it fairly quickly and get right into creating my style. But there are occasionally those people with super thick hair and it requires a lot 
of styling or a lot of prepping. All right, so I'm just taking large sections. We're almost finished. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit on the ends right here. All right, so once that is finished, you can run your hands through it, through her hair and it just helps with the frizz. We weren't trying to curl it, it was just simply to start getting rid of the frizz. All right, now what we're gonna do is build our volume into the hair. Let me see if I can lower her a little bit. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start by combing the hair kind of back. We need all of this hair to flow nicely. And so you want to make sure that the hair is laying where it should and kind of get an idea of how you're going to tease it. So I'm going to start off by teasing the crown area. Just make sure all the hair is combed back, like what you want to come back. You can kind of determine where you want the volume to start as long as everything flows nicely. All right, I'm gonna just start by taking a section straight across the crown area in the back. We're gonna lift it straight up. And then I'm gonna be taking some of my Osis Soft Dust Powder. This is a texture powder. I'm gonna pump it in at the root area and I'm going to tease it. And typically I like to tease the hair about 12 to 13 times. Three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I'm taking small, I'm teasing very on the back side, but almost in like a C scooping motion. I'm not starting up here. I'm starting really low at the base and we're just packing that hair in. So we're not creating a big frizzy mess. We're just doing like little teasing, but you want to make sure that you tease the hair enough times. That's why like 12 to 13 times is kind of the magical number for me. Anything less than that is just going to fall out. So you want to make sure that you're really building that padding and that cushion and that volume and getting it in the hair so it lasts all day. And that way when you're working through the rest of your style, you know that it's not going to come out. I'm going to pump a little bit more at the roots. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, 11, 12, 15. Okay. And some people have flatter head shapes back here. So if someone has a flatter head shape, you can always take the tees down further to compensate for their head being more flat. And you can really create the shape of what basically what you want. So I'm going to go down one more time, just a little bit lower on her, and we'll tease a little bit more. Three, four, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12. If the section is wider, sometimes I'll tease on this side and then make sure I tease enough on this side. You want it to be even so that way when you finish the style, you don't have any weird bumps or flat spots in certain places. Okay, and you can see how much volume she's got. So what we're gonna do now is just lightly comb back. And this might take just a second to work with. And you just wanna make sure that the top outer layer is completely smooth and frizz free. And if you tease right, it should be. It shouldn't be a huge, like a lot, there shouldn't be a lot of frizz. It shouldn't be super hard to work out any little frizz that there might be. It should be very simple if you are teasing correctly. And I'm just kind of evening out everything and smoothing. Now I wanna go ahead and tease the front a little bit because I do wanna make sure that they have enough volume in the front and it's kind of even and the whole style flows together. So I'm gonna take 
a section starting, this is starting wherever our T's ended. I'm gonna start there and then take it straight to the front so we can tease this whole side triangle section. I'm gonna bring the hair straight up and I'm gonna pump a little bit of my texture powder at the root. And again, I'm gonna tease it about 12 times. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12. <clears throat> I'm gonna take one more section underneath that. I'm gonna spray or just pump some of my texture powder. And then I'm going to tease that again. Eight, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And then just slightly flip that over. We're gonna comb all of that down. And if you comb it, or if you tease it correctly, then you, when you're combing it out like this, you won't, you won't actually comb out the tees. But if you only tease it, say, five or six times, then as you're smoothing and doing this part, it may comb out. And so once you tease it enough, you'll be able to, if you can see that, well, hold on, I don't know if you guys can see that. So I just combed it down, but by teasing it, properly, it will kind of create like a built-in cushion inside of the hair so that almost any point during the style when you want to pull out more volume or you get to the end of your client's like, I want a little bit more. If you tease the hair correctly, you'll be able to kind of stick a comb in there and just like pull up on certain places and it'll just automatically start to poof out. I don't know if you guys could see that on camera, but it'll just kind of move where you want it to and stay how you want it to. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm just taking a section straight back to where our other T's ended. We just wanna fill in the void, tease what didn't get teased yet over here just to make sure everything's nice and even in the volume department. I'm gonna pump a little bit more texture powder. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. We're going to take one more section back, comb it straight up, and then I'm going to pump in a little bit more powder. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then we're just going to flip this back. And again, we're just going to smooth out the top layer, make sure it's nice and shiny and it's all laying in the direction that we want it to go because we are going to be swooping this back. All right, once we have all the hair teased, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pull out the front pieces. We want to pull out the pieces that we want left down in front. So you can determine that with your client, how much hair they want to see and just kind of get those out and leave those out in the front. Okay. And then once that is done, we're going to start working on this side and taking your comb and just lightly swoop the hair. You can either do it behind the ear if they don't mind seeing their ear. A lot of people, if I find always want the tips of their ear covered at least because a lot of people feel uncomfortable with their ears or don't want them to stick out. So in this case, we're gonna go ahead and just keep the top of the ear covered. We're gonna do a nice, elegant swoop on the side. So what you wanna do is just take a minute, comb all this hair over, make sure it's nice and smooth, make sure there's not a lot of frizz. I'm gonna keep my hand there and just kind of hold it in the back center of the hair. I'm gonna grab a little bit of my Flexible Hold Air Spray and just lightly spray this side. And then take my comb and just lightly comb over that. And this is just gonna smooth down any little flyaways that there are. And this doesn't have to be perfect, but I still want it to be very smooth and then I can intentionally pull out texture later. So once this is pretty flat, you can take your hand and just kind of hold it in that back center. And then we're gonna start pinning. I'm gonna take a large bobby pin 
and just push it up. I'm going to keep my finger there and just kind of hold this until I've got it nice and secure. I'm going to take another two and a half inch bobby pin. These ones are a little bit longer, but you can definitely do it also with just a regular two inch size bobby pin. I'm going to put one more at the bottom because it is very important that you get that bottom hair to stay up. You don't want it sagging and this coming out when you finish this style. I'm going to take some two inch bobby pins now and I'm going to come up a little bit higher and just start to work these up into the hair. This is just going to create some extra security in the style. I'm going to come over on the other side and I want it to stay closely to the hair. I really want it to stay in with just these two bobby pins. It was kind of like fanning out a little bit, if that makes sense. So we really want to make sure that it stays nice and tight to the head as much as possible. That just means it's going to be nice and tight and secure. I'm going to just stick another one in here, make sure it's nice and tight to the head. And then I'm going to lightly comb this over. You just want to make sure that all the hair is laying where it should and you don't want any random hairs. Now I'm going to take a bobby pin and go straight across right here. This piece is pretty important because when you roll it over, you want this crown area to be nice and secure. Now at this point, I'm going to take a little bit more hairspray. This is my flexible hold air spray. I want to give it some hold, make sure we keep that first down. And then I'm just going to lightly pinch and pull some texture and volume out. I want to make sure that this side has some texture and volume because I don't want it to be super tight and like slick down to the head. I want it to have some texture and volume, especially because this is a modern French twist, which I think has more texture and it's not so elegant. It's a little bit on the messier side. I'm gonna go ahead and pin one more right here just to make sure this is nice and secure. Again, this piece is pretty important. I'm gonna go ahead and crisscross it over another couple bobby pins. There we go. Okay. And then you can pinch and pull some of this out. I'm gonna spray a little bit over here. And then I'm going to just lightly comb the ends of this hair. Make sure you keep this part nice and secure. You do not want to tug at this point. You want to be very careful with this style right now. So just hold it lightly, comb out the hair. It shouldn't have too many tangles, but just make sure that the hair is all flowing in the same direction. Also make sure these bobby pins that you put don't go too far over here because you do want to make sure that this is going to be able to fold over nicely. Now we're just going to smooth this side and get all of this hair flowing in the right direction just very carefully and take your time doing this. And then once we get it flowing, I'm going to kind of hold the hair and I'm going to grab one of these plastic elastic bands. I'm so you do want to make sure that you keep this hair um, going in the same direction when we put this elastic on the ends. So try to keep that hair in the direction that it's supposed to go in. I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave a good like three inches on the ends. And then I'm just going to put those ends inside and then you're just going to roll that hair. Just roll it and you're just going to kind of shape it. So just play with it for a second. Just kind of let it fall into your hands and then just kind of hold it like this. And then what we're going to do is grab I'm going to grab some two inch bobby pins and I'm just going to start to secure it on the sides first. And what I'm doing is I'm like grabbing some of this hair and taking it out 
and then locking it in. So I'm like kind of scooping, if that makes sense. So I'm scooping a little bit and then locking it in. And another technique that you could do if someone's hair is really slippery, before you roll the hair, what I'll do sometimes is pump a little bit of the softest powder inside before we do this roll. Or you can spray any kind of texture hairspray and then that is going to create a lot of grip and texture so when you lock those bobby pins in it'll literally like help to lock them in because it has all that texture powder so i'm just doing a scooping motion and locking it in and you don't want to let go until you've got it nice and secure And then I'm going to start putting some up here. And you can pull out some pieces in this bun on like the top layer to give it some texture. And then we're just going to come up here. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. And I'm going to go inside and you kinda of wanna bury the bobby pins, you don't want to put it on the top layer or you're going to see it. So you want to kind of open it up a little bit and just stick a couple in there. So this will keep, this will help keep this hair up so it's not sagging down. And it's just going to give this extra definition. So just find places where you can stick bobby pins in. That way you don't see them. If you put it on the outer layer, it's going to push it in. You'll see the bobby pins sticking out. And then we're just going to look at it. I'm gonna go ahead and just push this up a little bit under here. I'm just gonna go under and, and so at this point, it's really just your preference in looking and doing the finish, finishing touches to it. I'm gonna go ahead and just take some hairspray and lightly smooth the frizz just kind of take my hand and just very very lightly like lay down the hairs and then if you feel like you want more texture i'm going to come on this side and i don't know if you can see so this part right here is like gapping and stick sticking out a little bit so what i'm going to do is take my comb and just very lightly lay it on top and just kind of comb it. And then I'm gonna tuck this hair in more. So I'm just gonna take a bobby pin and kind of tighten it up. And again, the modern French twist is supposed to be more undone, not so perfect. I'm gonna spray this side and just lay down the frizzies and go around and pull out any additional volume that you want. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you learned a lot during this tutorial and if you try it on yourself or someone else, be sure to tag me on Instagram at megan.morson. I would love to see your recreations of my modern French twist. Also, if you are a bridal hairstylist who wants to take their hairstyling skills to the next level and learn how to create beautiful bridal hairstyles without frizz and create them with confidence, then I think you'll love my bridal hairstyling subscription. It's my monthly subscription group and every month you get two new hair classes, tutorials, you get all of my secrets and hacks. Um, for how I create bridal hairstyles, how to cut your time in half when creating the bridal styles, and it's like nothing that I put out for free. I give you all of the nitty gritty details, all the things that get left out just skimming through Instagram and social media in general. I tell you exactly step by step how I layer products, how to use products, what products to use when, and so much more. So if that sounds like something you need, I will put the link down below and I hope to see you inside. Thank you guys for watching. As always, if you have any other video suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I try to read all your comments and a lot of these videos are inspired by you guys. So let me know if you have video suggestions and I will see you all in the next video.